I took a course uh, with Glenn Page. Yes. And his course called his course call was called Nonviolent Political Alternatives. Mm -hmm. And he taught me two things very important. One, he taught me that there are alternatives. There are these nonviolent alternatives. Nonviolent actions has always been in history the weapons of ordinary people in 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 fighting for justice, in fighting for rights and of whatever you have. In all, in I, I would argue in world history, and you can back it up with with, with uh, research. Uh, the first research I did was on Islam and violence. It's not on nonviolence, Islam and violence. So when people ask me all the time, you know, you look at the case of the Philippines, uh, Southern Thailand, or you know, elsewhere in the world, whether Islam caused violence, I would say no. You know, but Islam is used to justify violence. That's true. Islam can be used to justify violence. And then given my experience, uh, I would say that all religions, or, all religions can be used to justify violence, uh, and Islam is no exception in that regard. The Nonviolent Crescent is my attempt to uh, delineate uh, Islamic principles in support of nonviolence and against the use of modern violence. From for Islam, because we are a, a religion built on the idea that God is the embodiment of mercy. Mm. And within, within the concept of Rahman, you have also the idea of the innocence mm. and that all lives is created because God has a purpose and all this together. And, and then I, I, I would argue that if you go that route, you will, you will undermine the purpose of creation itself. And therefore, it will be antithetical to Islam, uh, you know, as a, 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 as as a, as a belief, as a theological basis, and everything. You have all kinds of of stories uh, that come uh, with uh, Muslim and 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 and, and nonviolence that uh, you know, and people now begin to to record it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the 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 work of Mary King, for example. Yeah. about the second intifada, uh, mm -hmm. the first intifada, for example, uh, she argues that the first intifada was absolutely a nonviolent action. So yeah. you, have, you have lots of studies uh, around the world, I would argue. Uh, and even in Southern Thailand, uh, yes, there's uh, insurgents and whatnot, but what we do is that when we try to unearth, we try to identify you know, mm -hmm. uh, actions by uh, Muslims to, to to rebalance uh, the, the, the portrait of Islam mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. And there is a need to do just that. And that's why I wrote uh, Nonviolence and Islamic Imperative. About 25 years ago, we began to plant this strategic nonviolence commission in the heart of the security agencies. Okay. So it was a part of the National Security uh, Council of Thailand. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was his vice president, uh -huh. and we have the the deputy secretary general of the National Security Council as the as a chairman, and I was the vice chairman of this and, and another guy, and and what we have done is that our job is to come up with alternative policies, nonviolent policies, on security matters. So when when they come up with the usual things, you know. Uh, the security oriented, uh, how to use violence and whatnot. We came up with alternatives for the government.